You hear horror stories about people losing their data, their precious memories and important documents. In this video, I'm going to show you some practical steps to sort this out today. If you haven't got copies of your data, the first thing you need to do is prioritize your data. Think carefully if you lost all of your devices, do you really care about the photos that you've taken about the cat? Or what about those wedding photos or precious memories of your son's first steps? Have you got sensitive data, passports, driving license, tax returns? Take a copy today of the data that you don't have any copy of. Now the easiest solution, if you have a USB drive or a hard drive laying around, plug it in and take a copy of that data now. If you haven't got it, then what you can do is you can go to either Dropbox, Google Drive, iCloud, you can sign up for a free cloud account and you can start syncing some of this data. This will work with your PC or your desktop and it will also work with tablet and mobile phones. And once you've taken care of the basic necessities, the second thing is to actually start automating this process. You want this to happen in the background of your life. You don't really want to think of backup and copies of data and all that boring stuff. The best way I found to do this is with a device called a NAS, a network attached storage. These mini computers run in your home 24 seven and you just sort of forget about them. I've owned a QNAP NAS for five years. I'm enjoying personal backups are automated, but also cool services. Let's go to basics. What is NAS? How is NAS different from the basic USB drive or hard drive that I told you to back up previously on? The main difference is that USB drive, you can read and write with only one device at a single time. With NAS, NAS sits on your network, so you can access your network through Wi-Fi or through a cable, an ethernet cable. That means that multiple devices can simultaneously access the same amount of data and write in the same location. So if you have your family vacation photos, you can save them on your NAS and you can see on a mobile phone, on your TV, on any device that can access your home network. You can then obviously share this externally to people that live outside of your network, send them an easy link. NAS is not just about optimizing the way we access the storage, it also acts as a server. A server meaning that you can run applications on it. So you can have things like WordPress, Home Assistant, Plex. Keep watching because I'm gonna be talking to you more about NAS, but first I wanna to touch on an important point. Three to one backup strategy is fundamental. We need three copies of our data on two different media and in one different place. So it's no point having your computer and your NAS exactly in the same room. Yes, you have two copies of your data, but what happens if there's a flood or a fire or someone comes and steals your computer, they steal your NAS, you've lost everything. So all of your efforts are for nothing. So you need that one backup that's not in the same location, what we call an offsite backup. Could be in the cloud, could be another NAS, but how much is it gonna cost me, you would say? Well, the cool thing with NAS is once you've purchased your NAS, there are no ongoing fees. You buy the device and you buy the disc separately. The device, I would recommend if you're on a budget, go for maybe 200, 250 pounds, up to 500 pounds mid-tier, and then you can obviously spend a lot more than that. Things that you need to look at are the number of bays, which is crucial. So in each bay, you can put a disc, and the more discs you put in, the more space you'll have on your NAS, and the more fault tolerance you will have. Minimum at least two bays. If you can get more, that's better. Look at the RAM. RAM is going to be very important. Two gigs, four gigs, that might not be enough if you're intending to do high-end computing like virtualization. However, what I would say is for data storage, two gigs is fine. But look if it's expandable, because if it's expandable, RAM is very cheap. So when you're buying a NAS, you're not just buying the hardware, but you're also buying the software that's built on top of it. In terms of security, it's really important that you have up-to-date software. So look for well-known brands like QNAP, Synology, or Terramaster, just to name a few. Now let me give you the steps of how you can set this all up. First thing to do is get your disks and put the disks in. Now one thing you need to be careful of is if you're buying a 3.5 inch or a 2.5 inch drive, they're two different sizes and you're gonna to have to check the compatibility of your NAS. Insert the disks into the base, screw them tightly up, and slot them back in. Now, connect them to power, give the ethernet, and spin it up. There'll be a default URL that you need to type in your browser. So just type it up, and you should be able to find your device. If not, you can look for its IP address. So one important thing you're gonna to need to pick up immediately is the RAID. For Synology, I'm using the Synology Hybrid RAID, which is what I would recommend but look for alternative solutions with the brand that you're purchasing. Once you've created your volumes and your storage pools, it's time to create some shared folders. These shared folders will be available with each device that you connect up to it. 
So your home computer, your other computer, your daughter's computer, your tablet, whatever you have. So now we can actually sync data transfers between your computer and the NAS. That basically takes care of one part of the three to one backup strategy. The second thing you need to do is, is look for cloud syncs. Now this would be called differently depending on what NAS brand you're looking. But here in Synology, I'm showing you, we can easily create something that can save data to any cloud provider that you think of from the more business oriented type like Amazon S3 to a more consumer grade like Dropbox or Google Drive. These things can happen in three different ways, bi-directional, upwards or downwards. So be very careful because if you make any changes on the drive that might overwrite your data. So always test out that this works. Create a file that you don't care about, add it to your computer, check if it syncs to the shared folder and then from there, check to see if it goes to the cloud. Once you're happy with that, then try to delete the file from your computer and recover it from the cloud. These are basic checks that you need to do to ensure that you actually can get your data back in case you do lose it. No backup strategy is perfect, but this will reduce the chances that you lose data by a margin. If you enjoyed this video, then click on this other video where you can see some of my cool smart home automation videos. See ya.